Patreon.com slash the walk off podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. You say Kikuchi uh, looking good so far. Uh, pitched two innings against the Pirates yesterday. He's good again, right? We're good. Joel, what are your, what are your thoughts <laughs> on the bearded dragon? You say Kikuchi. That's bold. Um, the we're set. Am I am I going to say that you see you say Kikuchi is a, a dynamite pitcher all of a sudden? No, but what we saw with Ray in his half season with the Blue Jays, then signing and doing his Cy Young year, it took an off season of figuring stuff out with Pete Walker, and there is a communication breakdown between a Japanese ball player and his pitching coach. Okay, that's it takes a little bit more time to communicate what you want to have done when you're speaking in a completely different language to a player. So am I saying that you say Kikuchi is going to, is he going to come out and pop a two ERA? Absolutely. I don't think that's going to happen at all. That's not going to happen at all, but could he find some consistency that took a little bit more time because, you know, it took, it took Ray at an off season signing again, figuring out all the things that Walker wanted him to do to put that into play. And now you've seen an entire off season. You've t- seen an entire season. So maybe you m- might see a little bit more consistency. I'm very, very hopeful. I'm hopeful that, like I said, it's an issue with getting your point across, across different languages. And maybe you see some success out of the guy this year. All right, Garth, how are you feeling about uh, Yusei Kikuchi? I've said this on the show before that he got, like, he, he was awful last year. I'm not going to say that he wasn't he was but because he got signed late because of the lockout he didn't have any time at all with our training staff and when he came over from seattle he had that like little hitch at the top of his like wind up where he paused for like a split second and then went into his motion and Pete Walker and, and the pitching uh, coaches, they tried to, they wanted him to have a more fluid mechanics going to the plate. They wanted to get rid of that, that hitch in his delivery. <clears throat> and for a guy who has pitched his whole life with it, that's a big mechanical difference. And it just, it just ruined him last year. Like it, it just, it's too much on his plate with, like he had to learn it in the majors. He didn't get an off season. He didn't get a, a real spring training. Like he, he didn't get any of that. And um, when like, you know, and then it, it just got to the point where they couldn't start him anymore, but then they put him in the bullpen and it just kind of clicked, you know, he was a lot better in the bullpen, but I, I think with like a full year, a full off season, like to work through those mechanical issues, like, He's not winning the Cy Young like Robbie Ray did. Like, I'm not going to – like, that's insane. But can he be a really good number five starter, which is all we need him to be? Yeah. Yeah, he could be probably the best number five starter in baseball. You know, like, he he has that type of talent. We're not asking him to be a Manoa or a Gosman or a Bassett. We're asking him to just go out, give us an ERA, like, 3-8, 3-9, you know, pitch five plus six innings every fifth day don't need to light the world on fire just be good and i i I think he can um but i'm probably gonna eat my words by you know july and you'll be dog shit but i don't know i i want to see the best in you see kikuchi i i think i don't know i think he can he can be a guy i'm kind of with you garth i i'm pretty optimistic about how Kikuchi has reacted to the pitch clock. And I do think that speeding him up and giving him less time to get in his own head is only going to help the guy. And honestly, my expectations are low for him. Like you say, if we can get 3.8, 3.9, hell, I'll take a 4.5 ERA. If he can give us 130 to 150 innings, that's incredible. And and you know that he's going to be sheltered, right? Like they're not going to. The thing with the pitch clock is if Jansen puts down like a one, He's throwing fastball. Last year, he'd just shake him off and, like, wouldn't throw that fastball. Mm. This year, he doesn't have time for that. If, you know, if Jansen puts down the Good one, point. he's throwing the one. You know, like, I, I think to, taking that out of his hands is a good thing. To go on to Garth's point, he also, while doing that mechanical change, 
comboed his slider and his cutter into one pitch. So he was yep. like, he was being molded in so many different directions last year. So I just to play to that, I, I totally agree with Garth. Yeah, a lot was asked of him last year between changing his mechanics to, you know, working with a new catch, catching staff and so on and so forth, the language barrier, all of it, right? Um, you know, to Garth's point, he's your fifth starter, right? You do not need him to be fantastic. You just need him to be good. And he has the stuff to be good. And absolutely, he was saying it after yesterday's outing, right? That the pitch clock, not having to think about things so much and just sort of do what he has to do is, is to his benefit. You know, there were a lot of people that were analyzing the shit out of that outing yesterday. And the fact that, you know, he only threw eight fastballs and only two of them for strikes. Neither one was a called strike. They were both, I think, swinging strikes. And so, oh, he's still not relying on his fastball. He's still not throwing it. You know, the, the, it's the same old Kikuchi. It was one outing. We don't know that yet. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I think at this point, you know, one way or another, everybody has to hope that he's good because he is the fifth starter. One way or another, there's no sense in even arguing that part. You know, I, I do think the stuff is there. And I think working with the, the, the team over the off season and he's put on some muscle. Dude, dude's got I, I honestly think that the organization is going to put him in better spots to succeed this year as well. I really do think that they may have had a little bit of hubris to them after Robbie, after, you know, they changed Robbie Ray's mechanics a bit and he wins the Cy Young and they're like another lefty who throws 98. We've done it before. And then they started tinkering and like, like both Eugen and Garth said, you know, like a lot was asked of him last year. Yeah. And I don't think they're, I don't think they're going to leave him out there for a third time through the order. I think they're only going to expect him to go four or five innings when they do it. They're going to put him in spots to succeed. I mean, we watched when they transferred him into the bullpen at the end of last season and how well he did. And a lot of it had to do with, they weren't throwing him to the wolves, right? Like they well, picked their spots and. That's key is building up his confidence again. Any confidence yes. that he lost last season, you know, you use this spring training and, you know, like you said, how they manage his outings, at least to start off with and, and get that confidence back up. Yeah, I think the confidence is, uh, is a key thing. Like you said there, Jen. Uh, and for me, that was the biggest takeaway from that first outing against Pittsburgh was two innings pitched. He faced seven batters and he struck out five we can split hairs about his fastball usage or whatever, but the number, like the line was good at the end of the day. And that's something to build on last off season bullpen arm for us pitched great his last four outings of the year. So it's nice to see him come out day one, kind of pick up where he left off with some positivity. So I'm very encouraged. Uh, Johnny, do you have anything to add on uh, Yusei Kikuchi? Boy, everyone knows I love Yusei Kikuchi. Uh, I've been a Yusei Kikuchi advocate for a very long time. I'm I, this is the thing. It, it's hard to find a lefty that throws that hard and has that good, like, spin rate. And, I mean, you could tell with the confidence thing last year. I mean, you could tell with the guy when he's throwing pitches, you you could see if if he's throwing it confidently when he gets a sign. Last year, Yusei Kikuchi, he, you, there's a lot of funny pictures of him with his head down on the dugout looking like he's miserable and all that type of stuff, like just doesn't want to be there, just kind of wants to go into a shell. But the confidence thing's the biggest part with him. And, I mean, having an appearance like he did yesterday, he could have thrown zero fastball. I don't, like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, five punch outs in seven innings and or seven hit, uh, out of seven, or how many hitters was it? Seven hitters. Uh, seven hitters. Seven hitters is insane no matter what. And the people that are going to try to downplay it, and I may, like, the people that are going to try to downplay it saying, oh, he's facing minor leaguers. First of all, that wasn't a minor league lineup yesterday. And second of all, if he would have got shelled, those people would have been roasting him or telling, saying he's bad, all that type of stuff. You could just never impress people with that. I think he was really good yesterday. He was throwing pitches confidently. And someone on here made a point. I mean, not having the, like having the pitch clock where he doesn't have to overthink shit is going to be, is going to work wonders for him. Am I expecting him to have like a three, two ERA? 
Fuck no, I'm not expecting a 3-2 ERA. But having a, a number five lefty starter that throws 96-97 and can have like a 4-2-3, like 4-5 ERA, sign me up for that shit because I'm telling there's not a lot of teams in Major League Baseball that have that as their five guy. 